Hi, this is Wendy Lightheart, and in this lesson we're going to take a look at the addition property of equality. This is a property we can use to solve equations. In particular, we're going to see how we can use it to solve linear equations. So what is a linear equation? Let's take a look at the definition. A linear equation in one variable x is an equation that can be written in the form ax plus b equals zero, where a and b are real numbers, but a is not equal to zero. An example of a linear equation in, in x is 5x plus 3 equals 8. So you might look at this and say, well, this isn't the right form. It has equals 8, not equals 0. Well, we're going to learn a property called the addition property of equality that will allow us to um, change the form of this equation, rearrange terms, so that we could get zero on one side if we wanted to. The important thing here is that the x does not have any exponents on it, and there are no other terms that have x's with exponents on, on them. And x is not um, under a fraction bar, it's not under a radical sign or inside absolute value signs. There's nothing funny going on with x besides x being multiplied by a number or maybe some numbers added to x. That makes it a linear equation. So let's look at the addition property of equality now. This says that the same real number or algebraic expression may be added to or subtracted from both sides of an equation without changing the equation's solution. So notice how the word same and both are in bold. This is very important. It must be the same real number that you're adding or subtracting from both sides in order to not change the equation solutions. This can be expressed symbolically as follows. If a is equal to b, then if I add c to both sides, this will also be true. In other words, a plus c will be equal to b plus c. And if I subtracted c from both sides, this would also be true. So a minus c would be equal to b minus c. Let's see how we can use this property to solve an equation. Now remember that solving an equation means that we want to find the values of x that will make the equation true. So what we want to know is what does x equal? So we want to get the x all by itself so that we end up with a statement that says x equals some number and that will be our solution. So the addition property of equality says that we can add 9 to both sides of the equation and this will undo the subtraction. Now let's see how this looks. So we add 9 to both sides and notice that when we have negative 9 and positive 9 added together they add up to 0. So we have x plus 0 on the left which just adds up to x and then 12 plus 9 adds up to 21. So this gives us our solution. This says that x is equal to 21, and that's our solution. We can also write our solution set as follows. We can put the number 21 inside curly brackets. Now some equations you'll learn later in math will have may have more than one solution, and so Sometimes we'll use the curly brackets and then list all of the possible solutions inside the curly brackets, and that is our solution set. Well, let's check our answer by replacing x with 21 and see if this gives us a true statement, since that's what it means for 21 to be a solution to the equation. So the original equation, if I replace tw x with 21, I end up with 21 minus 9 equals 12. So is that a true statement? Well, if you subtract 9 from 21, you get 12. 
and 12 is equal to 12, so 21 is a solution. Let's look at another example. Here we want to solve the equation 5.7 equals 18.2 plus x. So remember, to find the solution means we need to find what is x equal to so that if I were to replace x with that number, I would end up with a true statement. Well, here we have 18.2 being added to x, so if I want to get rid of the 18.2, then I could subtract 18.2 from both sides because 18.2 minus 18.2, add those add up to zero, leaving us with just x on the right side. And then when you do the subtraction, 5.7 minus 18.2, we get negative 12.5. So x is equal to negative 12.5. That is our solution. And we can put that inside curly brackets, and that's called our solution set. So let's check our answer by replacing x with negative 12.5 and see if this gives us a true statement. So is it true that 5.7 is equal to 18.2 plus negative 12.5? Well, do the addition on the right. 18.2 plus negative 12.5 adds up to 5.7. And of course, 5.7 is equal to 5.7. This is true. So negative 12.5 is in fact a solution to our original equation. Let's look at one more. This equation says 7x is equal to 6x minus 8. This one's a little bit different than before. Before we only had a single x term, and this time we have an x term on both sides. So what we want to do is we want to end up with a single x on one side. So we're going to have to somehow move the 6x over to the other side to combine with the 7x. So in order to get rid of the 6x on the right, we could subtract 6x since 6x minus 6x is equal to 0. So those would cancel each other out. But the addition property of equality says that in order to end up with an equation that has the same solutions as our original, whatever we subtract from one side, we have to subtract the same thing from the other side. So we subtract 6x from both sides, and 7x minus 6x is x, and then the 6x is on the right cancel each other out since they add up to 0, leaving us with just the minus 8 or negative 8. So our solution to this equation is x is equal to negative 8, and so our solution set is negative 8 inside curly brackets. Let's check our answer by replacing x with negative 8 and see if this gives us a true statement. So this time we have x's on both sides to replace with, with negative 8. So is it true that 7 times negative 8 is equal to 6 times negative 8 minus 8? Well, if we do the order of operations, on the left side we just have multiplication to do. On the right side we need to multiply first, that gives us negative 48. And then we're going to have to subtract 8 from that, which gives us negative 56. And of course negative 56 is equal to negative 56, this is true. So negative 8 is a solution to our original equation. So we're going to learn other properties that will help us to solve a um, little bit more complicated equations later. But just remember that the addition property of equality says we must do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Either add a number or an expression to both sides or subtract a number or an expression from both sides in order to find the equation's solutions. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.